So the first screen you see is this big image made in Mac Paint, if anyone knows what that is. Um, it's just like a splash page, an image of the patchwork girl herself. Click through it to what is essentially a title page, Patchwork Girl or a Modern Monster by Mary slash Shelley and herself. And from here, you have links to five different sections of the text, the graveyard, the journal, the quilt, the story, and something called broken accents. Um, you could also investigate the sources if you were interested. Um, I often find it easier and more interesting to navigate not by following links from something like a title page, but by actually looking at the map overview, um, which is in fact the way I constructed the piece. Um, and so for me, this is what the piece looks like, really. And I would have been happy enough, in a sense, to have the reader have exactly the same experience reading it um, of moving through these movable pieces as I did writing it. But of course, the read-alone version uh, doesn't allow you to move things around so freely. So that's not actually the experience that a reader would really have. Um, you can reveal the links um, by holding down two keys. And there you see you can go in any of these different directions, which correspond to these uh, different chunks. Each of them is headed by another image that's the same image from the beginning, remixed, um, and that's followed by text. And I guess that's, should I stop there? That's, that's yeah. the beginning. Yeah, that's, that's good, that's a good start. Okay. a little bit about what choices I'm making about where to go, right? Mm -hmm. In addition to reading from it. Yes. Okay. All right, so shall I go? Okay. All right, so we have these five paths we could take, and I want them to be pretty evenly weighted for the reader. Um, so a reader could find herself um, somewhere that would be quite disorienting, potentially, um, and that's part of my plan. But for the purposes of this reading, I'm going to start somewhere that feels like a story. And in fact, I'm going to start with a chunk called birth. My birth takes place more than once, in the plea of a bygone monster, from a muddy hole by corpse light, under the needle, and under the pen. Or it took place not at all. But if I hope to tell a good story, I must leapfrog out of the muddle of my several births, to the day I parted for the last time with the author of my being, and set out to write my own destiny. So, if you check out the links, you find that you can go many different places from here, actually. So this be is already another branch in the road. The plea of a bygone monster takes you to selections from Mary Shelley, in which she discusses the female monster that Frankenstein built um, at the behest of the male monster and then destroyed, um, who is the original of my monster. From a muddy hole by corpse light takes you to the graveyard section. Under the needle and under the pen take you to two parallel paths in the voice of Mary Shelley. And I think I'm going to quickly hop to Mary Shelley's own words just to get my monster born. 
but I'm not going to read all of these out loud uh, since you've all read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein already. Um, but I will remind you that the fiend said, Frankenstein's monster said, what I ask of you is reasonable and moderate. I demand a creature of another sex, but as hideous as myself. The gratification is small, but it is all that I can receive, and it shall content me. It is true we shall be monsters, cut off from all the world, but on that account we shall be more attached to one another. Ah, and so on. I shall feel the affections of a sensitive being and become linked to the chain of existence and events from which I am now excluded. And now I'm clicking through this section to reach the moment when he thinks better of his creating a female monster and destroys her. And here, my monster interrupts Mary Shelley for the first time with a parenthetical remark. I told her to abort me, raise me from her book. I did not want what he wanted. I laughed when my parts lay scattered on the floor, scattered as the bodies from which I had sprung, discontinuous as I myself rejoiced to be. I danced in front of the disassembly and vertebrae rolled to the four corners of the wood floor. I wrapped my intestines around my neck and wrists and sashayed about, pitched my bladder against the wall. She watched me with half fearful amusement. She was always proper, but there was a fierce hunger under her stays. My hijinks did not make it through the wrought iron flourishes of her prose, but they can be glimpsed in the paisley of its negative spaces, a hurly-burly of minced flesh and gouts of blood. To be linked to the chain of existence and events, yes, but bound by it, no. I forge my own links. I'm building my own monstrous chain. And as time goes on, perhaps it will begin to resemble, rather, a web. Now we are back to Mary Shelley's voice. 